BE's full 800 MHz 4G switch on is so lusted over it's gained almost mythical status and with good reason because it will take EE's 4G coverage footprint from UK leading to a whole other world. Furthermore, up until this point EE's network has been entirely using high band spectrum of 1800, 2100 and 2600 megahertz spectrum which is also not so good for building penetration which they sort of made up for by having a higher mass density so say buildings were completely surrounded by mass so the signal could enter buildings better for example but now the 800 megahertz spectrum as well will take their indoor footprint to a new level as well so in this video I'm going to talk about some recent configurations of 4G 800MHz that I've seen and also how to recognise sort of definitively on masks that they have EE 4G 800MHz. None of my Band 20 supporting 4G devices are supported on EE for Volti so the 800 megahertz that I've seen is not locked to Volti only devices at this point in time. So the first type of EE 800 megahertz that I've come across is EE 800 megahertz available to everyone with a 4G device that supports those frequencies. Typical priority seems to be just below the 1800 megahertz 4G. So if you in very weak 1800 megahertz 4G, it will typically switch to 800 megahertz 4G, and that's what's primarily the type available in my area. Now this 4G 800 megahertz, because it allows all LTE devices to connect, including those without Volti, has to stay within the circuit switch fallback footprint to allow people to make and receive calls, especially emergency calls. This means that the 4800MHz is currently running at very low power compared to what it can do and it seems to be typically running within the 2G footprint. Now once the 800MHz gets permitted to be used only by Volti devices at that point we should see the 800MHz power rise and rise to produce the incredible levels of coverage. So there are tons of live EE 800MHz 4G masks in my area and I use EE's 800MHz pretty much multiple times every day. And that's of course without a Volti capable device. The next configuration that I've come across is also quite common and that's carrier aggregation between the 800MHz band and the 1800MHz band. Now this brings the total spectrum up to 25 megahertz, say from that cell sector, which raises the top achievable speeds to not too far off 200 megabits per second. Now these masks that broadcast 800 megahertz and 1800 megahertz in carry aggregation, most of them have the 800 megahertz like in scenario one. So you drift out of the 1800MHz area and you land on the 800 But some of them are set up in a way that you can only access the 800MHz 4G if it's aggregated with 1800 So if you've got a device that can band lock and you try and lock onto the 800MHz, you can't do it. But if you enable carry aggregation on your device and the device connects to 1800 and 800, then you have both. This could be a way to restrict the 800MHz 4G footprint within the 1800MHz 4G1 and therefore prevent users from landing in an area without circuit switch fallback for their calling. Another configuration that EE have in use with their 800MHz 4G is that if you have a device and lock it to 800MHz only and then do a network search, EE appears. So EE is broadcasting 800MHz but it is not available to register on with either Volti devices or non-Volti ones. Now in that case, the Mars could be, say, running at its sort of full intended future 800 megahertz power and they're just concerned about various things, that's why they're not allowing public devices on it just yet. 
or it could be just running like that for a whole variety of reasons really. Now from what I can gather, possibly the majority of broadcasting 800 megahertz sites at the moment are sort of hidden in the shadows as it were, so the public can't connect to them just yet. Although that's not to say that I haven't come across an awful lot of 800 megahertz ones that anyone can connect to. Just carrying on from the theme of being able to see 800 megahertz E 4G but not being able to register on it, I have heard from people suggestions that on their Marseille devices that are Volte compatible on EE, such as the iPhone 6s with the relevant carrier update, can use EE's 800 megahertz on that site, but say devices that are not Volte compatible can't use it on that site. So the 800 megahertz is only available to Volte users, which is most likely what its final configuration will be. Apart from perhaps, like I said, if they do, if they only allow non-Volte devices to connect to the 800 megahertz, if it's in carrier aggregation with 1800s, then they keep it within the 1800 footprint. The final approach that I've seen is where the mast is clearly marked as being sort of set up and cabled for E800 megahertz, but doing a network search, it doesn't show up, and when you say go into very weak 1800 4G zones you don't switch over to the 800 megahertz. Now this can potentially show an even sort of lower level of sort of hiding but most likely they haven't sort of configured that site to broadcast 800 megahertz just yet or it could be waiting on other things. So to summarize is 800 megahertz runs in the following ways. 1. Available to everyone, 2A. Available to everyone and in ACA configuration with 1800 MHz, 2B. Only available to users when carrier aggregated with 1800 MHz, number 3. It appears in a network search but you can't register on it, number 4. It appears on a network search but only those with Volte can register and use it, and number five, no one can see or use it. So how do you know if your site is cabled for E800 MHz 4G operation? If the mast is an outdoor macro type, so a tower or panels on a building or even panels on a street works pole where you can see the feeders, the thing to look out for is green cable tags. Now the green cable tags indicate that the mast is carrying 800 megahertz for E or 3 or both. However, by looking at what's actually written on the cable tags, you can work out for whom that cable is going to be carrying 800 megahertz for. Now if the writing on the cable starts with big E literally, so EE, then that means it's EE 800 megahertz only. If it starts with big H literally, so HE, Hutchinson, that means it's for three 800 megahertz only. And if it just has a little e, that means three and E 800 megahertz. Now, the thing to note with these is they don't generally change the cable tags if something's recently been added. So what that means is that I have come across masks that have capital H little e, so 3, 4, 3 800 megahertz 4G only that are also carrying EE. So actually potentially if you come across a cable tag with any of those options they could actually be carrying 800 megahertz 4G either now and sort of hidden or in the future. Although for sort of definitive purposes you're really looking out for the EE or just the E. If all the cables are enclosed, such as with a Streetworks pole, the best bet is to look for a cabinet, specifically a Huawei BTS3900A with an additional 800MHz module, which looks pretty much like this. Also looking at planning applications and looking for antenna schematics which state E800MHz is also a very good place to look.
thanks to Network Signal Guru and Cell Map and for producing the apps that I use for some of the network diagnostics and you saw the screenshots earlier in this video and if you don't have good EU 4G signal at the moment you probably will do very soon as this random web page that someone made and decided to send me shows 